how we number our pins. That's some canning lids that we had left over from our uh, canning season. And they're just attached with C-clips on there, on the top there. But these are all cages that we had elsewhere. We just replaced the bigger ones. The bigger ones were too hard for me to reach the does in the back. They always would go in the back corner and I'd have to get a step stool and practically get in the cage to be able to get my hands on the doe to get her out to breed. So we put a little bit smaller ones in. These you gotta work out really nice. Well, they're deep, the, yeah, they're 24 deep now instead of the 30 deep. So they're still a good size pin. But the others were getting old, they were getting needing needing to be replaced anyway, so it's kind of exciting getting to do a bunch of different stuff in the rabbitry. And I was gonna to show too how we do each cage. We're redoing these two. Each cage will also have an identifying tag for that animal. And this is just a piece of wire that he made to where these clip on and they're removable so anytime if I want to move does around move anybody around they this tag goes with them to the new cage we'll show you the pin system that we use too. see the color we like to just stand at the aisle back here when you come in the door look down the cages you can see these colors the red means they need bread those does are needing bread and if you look over here to the older does, this dark blue, she's bred. See, we've still got this one we need to get bred. That one's bred. And this color is a light baby blue, and that means she's got babies, so make sure to get them checked. And when these babies are older, about six weeks or so, she will have that blue pin left there, but we'll also put a red pin, and that just tells us, reminds us, it's a visual reminder when we walk in, something needs to be done. If you see a lot of those red tags, you need to be getting to work. <laughs> now, if you see rabbits with no pin, no color on those pins at all, that's bucks. These are our replacement bucks right now. We're letting them grow out, see what we've got. Not all of them will stay in the herd, but we want to grow them out, see what they're looking like. So far, he's our top runner. He's a blue Rex. And he's looking pretty nice. And I really like the black ones. The coats on those black are just awesome. So I'm hoping he really shapes up good. Then we've got an opal and a caster. But we don't need four junior bucks to stay in the herd. So just the best ones win. There's some of our does. These are all juniors in these newer pens here. They're all growing out. They're all about five months old. So we're starting to watch them, see when they may be ready to breed. That's the only two cow replacements we have. And this is our herd buck right now for our Rex. He's a broken blue. Here's how we hung the cages. These are pipe straps and these we had hanging the other cages that we replaced. We just left that pl uh, plumbing strap, reused it. But then this one, we instead of the plumbing strap to get in the way of the poop boards, we just used wire, heavy wire. But then the poop boards are sections. And you can see there's a board here that gives it the height. And it's notched out right there. So it goes in. But they're also in smaller sections. Here's, here's a section. But that way they can be taken out in pieces and scraped down, power washer or whatever needs to be done. Be able to clean them good or replace them apart if something needs to be replaced. There's the
this side. You see they've got a horrible life here. <laughs> they like to store uh, the nest boxes up above. So each one has, like there's two doughs in this stack, so there's two boxes, one for each dough. And then we store our extra boxes. We have several extra ones too, but we store those out in the barn just so they're not in here collecting hair and everything. And this is our little, uh, adds height to our um, table when we're tattooing. It gets the rabbit up a little higher for us. Some of the cages, or carrying cages. And we use several, we like the metal boxes with the plywood bottoms. So when that plywood gets bad, it can be just cut another piece. And then there is one wooden box down here. We've got one doe that she prefers that wooden box when she has hers. We've tried all kinds of different boxes with her and she just really likes that one the best. So that's fine. As long as she's a good mother with them and takes care of them, she can have whatever box that she wants. Now to keep this, the pins sturdy, you can see there's no give to them at all. We've got this board here that's right up against them. And then behind here on the post, we've got the, you can see there's just a screw with a washer in it and that helps hold for moving too. Makes for a really solid pin that way. And then down here is another piece of board. That just keeps everything from shifting and moving but all along that, um, this 4x4 four four here, we've got one of those um, screws with the washer on that pin and then the one below it. And right here in this corner, we have another one of those screws and washers. And there's one at the other end of the run as well. But we like this overhang right here for the poop board so you can just scrape them off and it goes back behind there's an overhang so it doesn't poop doesn't build up on the back of the lower pin or anything you gotta have that overhang there just like at the front here if you see the overhang on these poop boards too there's a purpose for that as you can see down the row here that way there's, it keeps the uh, bottom rung clean. You don't have to worry about poop going off into the feeders down below. Keeps for some really nice cages that way. And any feed or anything that would come out of the feeders is going to go right on there. And that can be scraped up and along with the poop. Now over along our buck wall over here, We've purposely let some poop build up. That's why when we like the overhang with the feeders here so any fines will fall through and land on the poop board. And then we can scrape that off and then put over here, we're going to start a worm bin over here. And we will show you that when we get to that. Hopefully you can see up top here in the rafters when we were going to shows, that was our carrying cages. I've got a whole row of them up there. They just store up top in the rafters. And then over there is our scale. We need to weigh them. But we use that up there for storage too. Got several different carriers and stuff up there. Try to utilize every everything that you can for storage. Here's the work area over here. It needs cleaned up a little bit. It's kind of kind of a mess right now, but paper towel holder right there. So that's pretty handy. 
And that's where we've been. That's our workbench. And here's our, uh, right here at the workbench is where we stand and do our paperwork when we're breeding and stuff. So we have the little calendar there. And then our ARBA certificate. Yeah, it's like anything with animals, it's going to get a little cruddy, but that's okay. We're getting ready to um, redo a lot in the rabbitry, though, so we thought we'd kind of try to get some videos now. We're going to put some windows in. This is a canvas back here, a roll down canvas. I'll show the better one. That one's kind of a nasty one, but. It's on the south side. We're going to replace all that. This is the roll down canvas that we made. They are two individual ones. You can raise and lower them as you need to according to the whatever the weather is. Today they could be open, but that's okay. We need to get some winterizing done and we'll be doing that before too long. So I'd show you this too real quick. This is the newest litter of Rex. These guys, this is Thursday. These guys were born on Monday. <laughs> 